What the crap? So in our last video, we started our journey exploring the complete history of life on Earth. We talked about how our world was born, as well as what it was like for the first 600 million years of its development. In short, it wasn't pretty. Lava, a toxic atmosphere, and constant bombardment from other objects in the inner solar system were just part of daily life on Earth during that time. But things were starting to slowly improve on this little red marble as we enter the Archean Eon. And this is a stretch of time that's three times longer than the stretch of time that we covered in the last one. By the time we get to the end of this video, we'll be about halfway through the complete history of the Earth. And luckily, we have a little bit more information to go on than we did last time. But as I said before, this will probably be the case with every video going forward because the closer we get to the present day, the more complete our geological record is. And for the first time, we now have enough data to actually divide this eon into eras. However, we still don't know enough about this time to merit giving each era its own individual video, but we'll get to that point soon enough. So now let's get into it, because we still have a long way to travel. And before things get better, it looks like things are going to have to get a lot worse. The Eo Archean began around 4 billion years ago, as the Earth was in the throes of a major crisis. Now, we've already talked about how our planet has had to deal with constant barrages of impacts from other objects in our solar system, including the major impact that would lead to the formation of the Moon. But sometime before the end of the Hadean, there would be a drastic increase in the frequency of impacts from asteroids and comets. So much so that from 4.1 to 3.8 billion years ago, we enter a time that has come to be referred to as the Late Heavy Bombardment. Some estimates calculate that there may have been as many as a few substantial impacts every millennium or so. This might sound like a bad thing, and it probably would be had we actually been there to witness this event taking place. But in all actuality, it may have had long-term effects that led to our world becoming one step closer to the Earth we know today. You see, Comets are not just solid chunks of rock like asteroids. They're actually made up of mostly dust and ice. And as you may know, ice is frozen water. And although there was water on Earth already, not nearly as much as the 70% that we have covering the planet today. It's believed that a large percentage of the water we have arrived in the form of cosmic snowballs being hucked at us every few centuries. Now, this is one of the main things that scientists have come to define this era by. And even though this event would start to slow down by 3.8 billion years ago, as the moon got further and further away from the Earth, recent evidence has led many to believe that there may have been at least one impact around the size of the one that wiped out the dinosaurs on average every 15 million years throughout the entire Archean. Starting at 3.6 billion years ago, we come to the Paleoarchean, an era lasting around 400 million years. This time has been defined by two major events that we know of so far. The first one being, as the sea level rose and the crust of the Earth began to cool, the first large landmass would form. Now, we can't know exactly what this landmass actually looked like, but we know that it was at least partly made up of Western Australia and South Africa. It was given the name Valbera, and on its coasts would be the most important step in the history of our planet yet. We have at last arrived at the earliest evidence of life. Now, there's a very good chance that single-celled life had at least existed for millions of years before this, but this is the earliest evidence that has been found in the fossil record. And it might not seem like much, but it's believed that these little microbes called cyanobacteria would make a massive change to the entire world simply by doing what they do. For those of you who play Spore, 
We've officially now entered the cell phase. These little guys lived in colonies and were constantly expanding along the coasts and eventually into the riverways of Valbera. They created their own nutrients using photosynthesis, a process that works so well that it's been passed down to all living plants today. Thriving in the carbon dioxide rich atmosphere, these first organisms would arguably become Earth's very first rulers. You know, I suddenly feel proud to be a cyanobacteria. Don't judge me. As we get into the Mesoarchean around 3.2 billion years ago, we start to see a new phenomenon take place as a result of the cooler surface temperature of the ground with the still active volcanism underneath. Plate tectonics begin to move the crust around the globe, causing continents to tear apart and form together to form supercontinents. By this point, the global temperature had already dropped considerably from what it was back in the Hadean, but it still isn't what we would call comfortable by today's standards. Around 50 degrees Celsius or 122 degrees Fahrenheit and 85 degrees Celsius or 185 degrees Fahrenheit was the average at this time. This was probably the case because the atmosphere was still mostly comprised of greenhouse gases like methane and the previously mentioned carbon dioxide that was fueling the cyanobacteria empire. But this was something that would actually start to change as the current rulers of the Archean Earth spread and diversified into different species and started to form complex microbial ecosystems. As the cyanobacteria took over, they would start to do something that we normally think of as only something that humans are capable of. Drastic changes to the global climate. And they basically did this simply by existing. You see, as these microorganisms took in CO2, they would produce oxygen as a byproduct. This would lead to a drop in temperatures until eventually, by 2.9 billion years ago, the Earth would experience its very first glaciation at the poles. So in about half a billion years, the cyanobacteria took over the world and made the hyper greenhouse climate cooler until Earth was basically experiencing its very first ice age. That's a lot of accomplishment for what is basically mats of green goo. Excuse me, sir. Have you learned of the glory of the goo? The ice would not become a permanent fixture. By 2.7 billion years ago, it had already completely receded. I say already like we're not talking about 200 million years of cold. This marks the beginning of the fourth and final era of the Archean, the Neo-Archean. And the cyanobacteria had made the world theirs, evolving into new niches and covering different environments all over the globe. And let's not get it twisted. These guys were also the first organisms to adapt to dry land as well. As the microbial mats spread across the continents and islands, it's thought that the land would actually start to turn green for the first time. Not with true plants yet, but with microbial mats made up of trillions of tiny organisms who have managed to make the planet theirs. And over the millions of years that followed, the land masses would come together to form the first land that was large enough to be considered a supercontinent. We now call this continent Kennerland. And it was, well it, well, it was largely empty, with the exception of the green goo slowly spreading across it, almost like a moldy jelly just kinda slurking across there. Well, even though there actually wasn't mold yet. It's all quite beautiful, isn't it? It's amazing how sci-fi some of this stuff seems as I research these different times in Earth's past. And it's really easy to seem like we're just glossing over everything. And to be honest, we are. And this is because now, covering the first 50% of Earth's existence, we're still lacking a lot of the fossil record to be able to accurately know everything that was going on during this eon. The fossils from the once proud Sinobacterian Empire can now only be found in places like Shark Bay, Australia. They're called stromatolites, and the top layers of these bulbs of rock are actually still alive. That's right, 
the cyanobacteria still continued to exist two and a half billion years after their reign as the microbial rulers of this world came to an end. And cyanobacteria actually still exist today in a bunch of other niches, including some kinds even living in our atmosphere, floating in the air today. And now we've come to the end of the Archean Eon. As I said, we are now already halfway home. And from here, things are going to start to get a little bit more complex. But to recap, our planet now has a moon, a solid crust with abundant water on its surface. The first two supercontinents have come together and been torn apart. We have a climate that's starting to fluctuate, and oxygen is becoming more and more abundant all the time. And much of this was thanks to the mighty Cyanobacterian Empire. You know, maybe I should just stay like this. Maybe I should just remain in the Archean and join a giant mass of goo. For the glory of the Empire! Wait, what am I saying? This sucks. I have to try to get back to becoming a human. I have to get back to my own time. And after consulting the Pokedex, I think I know how. I evolved into this form by breaching 1,500 subscribers while being next to those hydrothermal vents at the end of the Hadean, remember? So maybe that's the key. Maybe if I hit different milestones of subscribers while in the right location, I'll evolve to the next stage of my evolution and eventually become human again. Okay, so I know that this is something that you're probably all used to hearing all the time, but this just became way more important. If you made it to this point in the video, and you're not already, please, for the love of God, subscribe! And if you are subscribed already, share this or any of my other videos to other people so they can subscribe. I need everyone's help to move forward through time and turn back into me again. Until I reach the next milestone, I have to stay here with this colony, otherwise I'll dry out and die. Please, seriously, these guys suck. All they do is talk about the glory of the goo. Until then, I'll just have to wait here. Take care, everybody. Pray for me.